Welcome to this week's episode of the School of Bravery. I'm so excited to have Erica Olson with us, Erica Amy Olson with us today. Um, we're gonna this month in the School of Bravery. We are, I'm looking over here because all the all the post-it notes for all of the themes of the month are over here. And this month we're talking about vulnerability and boundaries. And um, I asked Erica to join us today because she is a songwriter and I love my songwriter friends, uh, but she also has an experience as um, an attorney. And I know that all of my attorney friends and family members, I have a couple family members who are attorneys and, or have like background in law. And my first uh, job out of college was working as a paralegal for an IP attorney, for an intellectual property attorney. So I have a soft spot in my heart for attorneys just because I know that they like, at least right now in our political system, they're like keeping, <laughs> holding down the fort for us, even though things are kind of crazy and circus-like. So um, that is why I asked Erica to join us. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm oh so excited to be here. The, this is, you know, we've taken like a, a little bit of a break from doing episodes on a regular basis um, just because I wanted to focus on my music and focus on uh, the students of the School of Bravery and what they need on a week-to-week -week basis. So um, it's really great to have get back into the flow of doing podcast stuff um, and be in the interview chair rather than the like advisee chair um, mm. or the advisor chair, I should say. So Erica is a songwriter and has a background in, as an attorney, also lives in London, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have kids and a I husband. Do. I do, yeah. And is there anything else I'm missing on your like shingles outside your house? <laughs> um, no, I think that, you know, I mean, sister, auntie, I like that. I like that title too. That one. Yeah. Makes me happy. Um, so let me ask you, okay, so I just kind of sprung this topic on you right before you pressed inter press record. So, <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> what, um, <laughs> what comes to mind when you, with all of your experience, mm. um, what comes to mind when somebody says enforcing or reinforcing boundaries? Oh, um, oh, well, <clears throat> a lot of things. Um, so for, I mean, for, from a life perspective, um, I think what I mentioned is you're like, I want you to talk about boundaries from the point of view of an attorney. And I was like that I was, I'm an imposter for that topic because I had no boundaries, but then <clears throat> you Wait, how did that look? Cause I don't know how that looks as like, yeah. So, so as a, as a human being, I had no boundaries Got it. Uh, as I was, um, you know, I don't know if like one of the, one of the, the things they say about attorneys is, you know, it's like a pie eating contest and, um, how you know that you've won the contest is when you have more pie, you know? Um, and so, so it's <clears throat> as a, as a young attorney, um, and you know, growing up in the legal field, I, I, I just had zero boundaries. I, um, and my life suffered and my health suffered and my, um, my relationship with my husband suffered. Um, but I was becoming a pretty gosh darn good attorney. Um, but I mean, that was, there was, it was only so long that that could, that I could sustain that. Um, and so, um, and how, how did those, how did it look to have bad boundaries um, I mean, other, other than the stuff that you just mentioned, but like yeah. giving an example of how a boundary was constantly not <clears throat> enforced. I never, I never said no to anything. Mm -hmm. um, I always, um, I always, even, even when I was like completely depleted, like I could not, I could not say no. Um, and that, and, and what that would look like would be, you know, I, I lost all perspective. I would come home. I remember, I remember like one particular Saturday I came home 
and I had um, my partner uh, my partner had asked me to rewrite a letter to make sure a letter was okay. And so I had I had you know in a mil- in addition to a million other things, I rewrote that letter, and um, and there was one line in it, and it was talking about like we we honed in on an issue. And I changed it to hone as opposed to home, H-O-N-E as opposed to H-O-M-E. And, and I didn't think like I had heard, I had heard that cliche as hone. And really, I mean, and it could be both, but like I, I literally like came undone that day because I had changed it from home to hone, which is a slight thing but could be conceived as like you know not knowing you know that we didn't have a proper command of the English language in this letter to a judge and it was just like I literally came home and came completely unraveled over one word I had zero perspective um and at the end of the day you know I mean it's not a huge deal but for like for me like it it was it I didn't get in trouble for it it wasn't but I just absolutely like lost it. Um, and then, and then, you know, from a logistical standpoint, what it looked like is, uh Oh, did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Okay. Oh, stuff on my computer is going crazy. Oh, okay. Oh. That's all right. Sorry. Um, from a logistical standpoint, where did you go? I want to be able to see you when I'm talking to you. <laughs> ah! Um, Anyway, um, from a logistical standpoint, I um, like went from like, I was like, okay, I'm going to set boundaries. I'm not going to, I'm not going to work. um, I'm not going to work past eight o'clock. And so what that looked like is I worked seven days a week instead of five days a week. And then I was like, okay, I'm not going to work on weekends. (laughs) And so what that looked like, oh, and that, and that came undone, um, after I'd worked like four months in a row without a single day off. And then, um, and then, so then I was like, okay, I'm not going to work on weekends. And then I was working till, you know, like well past midnight, um, almost every day of the week. So I just, I just had no boundaries, like no. <laughs> well, I mean, cause so for, for myself, I'm a, I am definitely a workaholic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have kids. I don't have, a partner, a spouse, or somebody that's like, I don't have people taking away that attention. Like I'm in control of that. So I'm in a rare situation where like, I'm in a, I should say I'm in a rare season of life where I get to be a workaholic. And the only thing that's um, on the lot, they're doing renovations upstairs. If you guys hear thumping, it's not, it's, I'm not being burgled. It's just, (laughs) It's just really thin walls. <laughs> I'm gonna be worried about you. Oh no, no, no! Actually, this is a good boundary, good boundary story. So, um, I moved to Nashville, moved into this place that evidently was not a good place to move into. Um, had different repairs that needed to happen, or like complaints, or that kind of thing. Every single week that I was here, that I've been here. Mm-hmm. Um, there was finally like a leak in the ceiling in the kitchen into the light fixture and a leak into the ce- from the ceiling into the bathroom light fixture on separate weeks, so separate situations, separate things. And I channeled all of all 13 seasons of Law and Order SVU that I've watched. <laughs> and I researched all the U.S. court cases that proved that they broke the lease before I did. Mm. And I walked in to the leasing office and threw the biggest legal hissy fit I've ever thrown. And it worked. And I basically, (laughs) I walked in and was like, you guys broke the lease before I did. According to these US court cases, you, like, I need to be let out of my lease without penalty. Thank you very Uh. much. I'm going to give you 24 hours to like notify me, but I have these three phone numbers of like better business bureau, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like health code, that kind of stuff. I'm going to call these people in 24 hours if I don't get a resolution Um, and it worked and that, but it took like 12 weeks of like my boundary getting crossed every single time for me to actually make some, um, 
to take some serious action about it other than just complaining, you know? Um, But it does pay off. Like when you, when you lay those really solid boundaries, it really does pay off. Um, But the thing that hasn't changed is that they're still doing renovations upstairs. So, (laughs) so before I distracted myself, um, I tend to work more than I play Mm. or work more than I do relationships. Um, That's just me. And I know that to be like one of my tendencies, that's one of my boundaries that I know like, all right, it's time to take a break. Um, And I have, you know, and I have a chronic illness. I have hypothyroidism, Mm. which Mm. usually keeps that pretty reined in um, because I can't work too hard my body physically won't let me, um, which is a, a gift, you know, even though it's annoying, it's a gift because I'm not like, my body will be very clear with me about when I have gone yes. too far. Even if my two version of too far is not too far for somebody else, if that makes yes. sense. Um, so what happened when you realized that a change needed to happen. I mean, you may, you took the weekends off, then what? Well, so I was, I was experimenting, like at least, at least I, at least I recognized it, that I needed to, you know, I needed to do something. Um, and it took me, it took me years to unravel kind of what I had, what I had done. And I, it manifested in different physical ways for me. Like a lot of it was, was in my joints, like my knees and um, just became very like locked up and, um, and then, and then my digestive, my digestive tract completely, um, like started to, to break down on me. And I didn't, you know, there wasn't anything necessarily diagnosed, although I, you know, we were trying to get pregnant and we couldn't get pregnant. Um, I didn't have to go to the, um, I just, I had a switch. I, I changed my, kind of career trajectory. I was at like big law firms for years. And then um, I had a really, um, I, I had a, like kind of a shattering experience. Um, one of my partners committed suicide. And so that was, oh my gosh, that really, really changed my trajectory um, significantly. Wow. Um, it didn't happen right away, but you know, it was, it was just one of those things. How, um, I'm a, I'm just making assumptions, reading between the lines. But did, was his, were his boundaries also being well, stomped so he, on by the work? There was, there was also it, it. It happened. I mean, it was like one of those perfect storms, right? It was he. Um, he suffered from mental illness, um, and he. Um, we just had, you know, we had. It was a perfect storm. It was in the. We were. I was a. I was a litigator. I was a financial services litigator. Um, and it was in 2008 when the um, when everything went wonky, mm-hmm. um, and it was just um, everything. You know, I mean, I can't I can't speculate as to what exactly happened in his life, um, but you know, it was just it was like one of those perfect storms. And it, it actually, um, I think in our community, several it, several attorneys took their lives around that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it was, it was incredibly tragic and, um, and so devastating for families and, and, you know, everyone who was, who was related and involved in their lives. And, um, and it took me, you know, I mean, of course, like that's like completely jarring. Um, but it wasn't until, a, um, about a year or so later that I left that law firm to try to find and do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and um and when I imagine I, did- I imagine it's not um it's not uncommon for attorneys to have problems with their personal boundaries. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean it's you know it's it's a it's a profession. I love attorneys and you obviously have a soft spot too. Like I yeah. think I mean I love like they are they are um creative, passionate, intelligent um articulate like just these real balls of amazingness um and there's something about the practice of law that can be really um 
just so hard because the what a lot of what you know a lot of us watch a lot of law and order before we go to law school and mm -hmm. that's what we think it's going to be like you know and and then the reality set in and it's really difficult and that's true in all professions right like musicians creatives like every doctors like i mean you know it's all it is it the the idea that you that you have going into something does not always jive with the practical realities of what that is, right? Right. And that's and that's super um, that's super difficult. And I think for attorneys, then there's you know then there's like some negativity about the profession that 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 comes along too. And um, <clears throat> and I think it can be really it can just be really really hard. And you're also carrying you know you're I, I say one of the things I. Um, I stopped practicing uh, after I had my first child and he was, um, he, he was five weeks early and really young. And, um, and I tell people, like, I tried to go back after, after a while, after taking a break. And the thing that I realized is like, as an attorney, basically what made me really good at my job is I would say to my clients, leave, leave this here, whatever their, whatever their conflict was, leave your conflict here. Let me deal with it. Let me figure it out. Let me parse through it. You, you go heal. You move on with your life. Like, yes, we're going to have to touch base and we're going to have to go back through this stuff, but I let me have this burden. And when, um, and when I had kids, I no longer had that energetic space to share. Um, mm -hmm. My my children needed that space. My family needed that space in a way that I hadn't needed that space. I mean, I did need more of that space, but I, but I could survive without it. And when I had children, like I couldn't. And so I think that's part of it too, as attorneys, like we, we really, I think um, when you, when you find, when you find the good ones, you know, um, they, they really are so concerned about, um, about their clients and about the things that they're doing. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it can be a lot for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I just find it, you know, it, there are so many professions that are kind of like the, um, the shoemaker son situation where like, right. There's that saying that I can't remember right now because of course I need to use it. And of course I can't find it. Um, <laughs> Um, but that, you know, a shoemaker's son always needs more shoe repairs than anybody else's. And it, that is true. Like a musician's, um, ability to take time to be musical just for themselves. That's like sometimes gets when they are professional, that gets the, to the bottom of the list. Um, so what we're talking about is this work-life balance and, you reprioritized your life based on your values. It sounds like. Yeah, I feel um, that and the practical reality of it too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think um, I'm so. I had no intention of ever stopping work as an attorney. Um, that was never in my in my you know my life arc, my plans. That was never that was never it. Um, and, um, and I was raised by a stay at home mom. Um, and I think I, I just, um, I just always had a drive to, to work. And, um, and when my, when my, when my child, when my, my son came, um, I was forced to slow down. I was forced to, um, to step back and, um, for me, a large part of it was like, I went to law school for three years to figure out how to be a lawyer and I'm not going to like stop and figure out how to be a mom, you know, like, and that, that to me was hugely important, um, considering just how, how little my, my child was. And then, um, you know, I think that having, um, uh, for me, uh, having these, these children, I have three now, um, three for good. And <laughs> you know, um, was that they are the ones who have like taught me what boundaries really are. You know, I recognized very like I I and I still I still 
see it. Um, I still have moments of, of recognition. Like um, it wasn't until I had children that I even began to do anything remotely um, that looked like self-care. Um, it wasn't, until, and, it, and because I could see, I could see that I could not show up for them. Um, I could not show up for them fully without caring for myself. You know, the thing, like a mantra that I had very early on was that I cannot pour from an empty cup. And I, um, I had to figure out how to fill my cup up, you know? Um, and so for me, that started out with yoga and yoga became my, my thing. And um, then it, it went into Ayurveda, like some study of Ayurveda and like, and daily practices, you know, like waking up and how do I start my day? What does that look like, you know? Um, and, and there have been times when it, when, when that self-care, you know, I had to be, I had to be like super militant about it because I was building a, I was building a muscle, right? Like I was, I was learning a habit and building a muscle. And, and there were times when I would be shattered if I didn't start my day with my, my hot water and lemon and my abiyanga and like, you know, have my poop before I leave the house. Like I was like, my whole day was off if that did not go down, you know? And now it's like, I, I've, I've, I've learned a different way of being and I can, I can pull on those resources more readily. And um, I now know, like, I mean, before, before all that, like, I didn't even know what it was like to really feel good. I didn't know what it was like to really sleep, you know, because I had had years and years of interrupted, um, probably uh, a bit insomnia, um, where I would just wake up with my cases going through my head and what I needed to do. I'd, I'd just wake up in the middle of the night and start working, you know, um, and be like, oh yeah, I'll be fine. And then meanwhile, I'm like on Diet Coke and, you know, I right. mean, just like, totally. you know, it's so, it's so interesting. This just occurred to me that like when our boundaries are not enforced, our buffer for what we allow as like, let's say you have to get up without your hot tea and lemon and you know, you, it would ruin your day if you had no buffer. Yeah. Yes. It would very much. Yeah. So like um, if you have no buffer in your life for getting in a car accident on your way to work, it ruins your entire month. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, and so sometimes you're, if you are in, encountering a lack of boundaries being enforced in your life, sometimes that looks like everything is do or die. Everything. Yes. And everything is a crisis. Yep. Um, and in a pre previously in the school of bravery, we, we've been talking a lot about building systems and how that's actually when you build a system, as opposed to a goal, you're actually reinvent, you're investing your energy back into yourself and your business. Um, and this is part of that, you know, when you are able to set in place a boundary and consistently enforce it, you're building for yourself that buffer of, no, when, when, when shit hits the fan, it's going to be all right. I mean, it's going to be bad, you know, like a car accident, nobody wants a car accident, right. but it's not going to ruin my month because I have a buffer of finances or I have a buffer of, time like the people in my life are understanding and know that I show up on time and that kind of thing so yes. um so if if like you're not ha if you're listening to this and you don't have infertility issues or locked knees or some of these other physical symptoms yeah. um, if your calendar is full go all the time and one little thing gets changed and ruins everything um that's a good indicator of how your boundaries probably are a little too, um, need some more attention basically. Yeah. yeah. And I also am finding like, as, as I get better at it, you know, um, it's a constantly evolving process, but like, so we're, we're about to move. Um, we're going to be moving from London out to the countryside. And, um, in, in years past, I mean, I've done, we've, we've moved, only moved here three years ago and, and I, um, even then, like even, even, I mean, I'm, st you know, I've, I've come so far since then, like I see on the calendar that we've got the move and I am knocking everything I can off of it. Like 
there's, you know, we're, it's going to be around Christmas time. So the, 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 um, there's going to be a lot of pull to like, you know, go do Christmas stuff and like hang out with people for Christmas and, you know, get all these things on the calendar. And I'm like, no, no. And the, and the reason is, is that I know that when we move, I know, like, I know now that like, crazy shit happens when you move things that are totally unpredictable. And if I have us, if I have us going at full tilt, um, we are going to get knocked down. We are going to have short fuses. We are going to have, we, we're not going to be able to cope with like just the, the little strange things that happen. Like for my children, I know that I need, I need like, so for me and my, in my music and my, and what I'm doing in life now, right? Like I'm not, I'm not scheduling any, any workshops. I'm not scheduling any co-writes. I'm not scheduling. I'm not, I'm not planning to do anything related to music, at least in the first four to six weeks of when we move, because my kids are going to need me. They're going to be, they're going to be disrupted. There's probably going to be some regressions, some like lost sleep, some, perhaps some bedwetting. Like, and I just, you know, if, if, because, because I've created more, like I, I talk about, I talk about getting, um, like when you have, when you have no room for error, right? Mm-hmm. Like exactly what you're saying. When there's no room for error, everything breaks you. So I need to build, I need to build room for error. I need to build room for us, for, uh, for us. And I, and I hold this container like this. And the way I hold this container is by recognizing and by taking care of myself, like I'll be going to bed. I won't be drinking a lot over this holiday. You know, I won't, I'll be, I'll be watching, you know, I'll be watching how I feel. I'll be watching, watching if I'm getting irritated. Like if I find myself getting, getting angry quickly, I'll be like, Ooh, what's, what's going on? What, if, what's, you know, where do I need, where do I need space? Like, do I need to go for a walk? Do I need to, you know, right, right. um, and, uh, and it's not going to be perfect, but. And, and, you know, so, okay. So in the realm of bare naked bravery and what we know, or what I know of as the ingredients of bravery, there's these 12 ingredients of bravery, three main ones. And the other ones are kind of underneath, right? The rest of them are underneath, um, sub ingredients. So vulnerability, imagination, improvisation, those are the three main ingredients and boundaries enforcing boundaries that that realm is underneath vulnerability because ultimately when we are the ones that are removing or changing our boundaries we have power of choice and we are doing brave things typically Mm -hmm. like state telling somebody no i can't do that that's a brave thing right um however when somebody else breaks down our boundaries that's called rape or victimization and when you, and in a lot of these cases where, um, cases, haha, when in a lot of these situations, um, you still have power of choice in, yes, I will do that. No, I will not do that. Whereas if you um, don't enforce that boundary, you are setting yourself up or someone else up for that um, massive amount of friction. Mm-hmm. Um, which makes life really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, so, thoughts? Sorry, I just I don't, have, oh. I don't really have a question except I was just trying to connect that back. You know? Yeah. No. So, um, I it's really interesting that you're saying. I mean, because I've got I've got all like as. Mm, as we've been, as I was kind of thinking about, oh, we're going to talk about boundaries. Like I'm rec, like I'm, I'm seeing like all of these boundaries and like how I've, you know, how I've, I've failed to, you know, I failed to protect my <laughs> fortress or what have you. Um, but I also think like, I mean, I think, I think we get lulled into, into not protecting our boundaries. Um, sometimes, you know, like, um, so by I'm I'm thinking of the intrusion and the thing that I'm thinking about I'm thinking about two instances like one I'm working on this we're we're negotiating a lease agreement um, at this new place and we we have an advocate um, to represent us 
and the guy on the other side um, wants to represent himself. He's a, he's a real estate finance attorney um, and so fancies himself kind of an expert in this field. And so he's, he's and, and I mean, totally fine, but so he wants to deal with us directly because he feels like intermediators get in the way. And, and the, thing, the thing that, um, in what you said about when boundaries are, are, are penetrated by others, mm-hmm. like this to me is an example of how I'm like on the fence because one of my boundaries is I have an advocate for this situation. The reason why I have an advocate for this situation is because I recognize I am not an expert in UK um, te- landlord-tenant law. And right. so I, I have somebody to deal with this. And while I recognize the benefit in one-on-one interaction, I have a advocate for a reason, you know? Um, however, like, despite that, it's hard to, it's hard, it's hard for me to hold that ground because he keeps talking to me directly. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, and you get lulled into this sense of like, okay, we'll have this rapport and maybe this will, you know, this will work out. But in the, re- the, the reality of it is, it's like, it's just making it harder for me to reestablish my boundary. Mm-hmm. Of, Please speak to my advocate, not to me. You right. Know? Well, so business owners, I've encountered this as a business owner in scheduling, say for mm-hmm. instance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I'll, often I'll talk about intrinsic and extrin- external um, enforcing factors, basically. So um, if somebody is coming to you and texting you about scheduling and like when you need to cut, like, when are you available? Oh, I'm available at this time. You know, have that back and forth. Like, what about Tuesday at two? No. How about Wednesday at four? Uh, how about Friday at eight? Yeah. Okay. That's great. So that whole conversation takes up a ton of time. Yeah. And when I was teaching cello lessons full time, I just defaulted that to like, nope, everybody has the same time every week. No one can switch times at all. Don't even ask. You're going to get a no. Yeah. <laughs> boundary, <laughs> boundary. Yeah. big old boundary. Um, exactly. <laughs> Snaps for that. So, and now, now doing this version of my life, I have a software doing my scheduling for me. So I have basically given the reins of my calendar to this robot, calendar robot, and the calendar, ro- and anybody who has to schedule time with me has to go through this calendar robot. Well, you, the very second somebody will text me and go like, Oh, how about this time at this time? And we go off script or we go off road and we schedule something off road inevitably like I'll forget, or it doesn't get on my calendar or something will go awry. And, and it's because the system exists for a reason. The software exists for a reason. The advocate exists for a reason um, it supports the relationship so that I don't actually step on my, on somebody else's toes or make assumptions that are incorrect or like they're going to show up at a certain time when we said another time actually, and that kind of thing. So, or time zone math. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy for your schedule bot. Like that was very, I was, I was grateful for that. I was oh like, Yeah. I don't want to convert these times and it did it for us. Yeah, exactly. So, and sometimes the advocate makes it easier to do. Um, So all that, all that to say business owners will encounter this all the time that they set a boundary and then the customer will test that boundary or the parent will set a boundary and the kid will go test the boundary by going asking dad. Mm Mm-hmm right? (laughs) Because they still want what they want. And so they're going to try to get what they want, which is fine. Yes. Um, And I think, I think the thing is, is that, is that, you know, I think that um, just because the boundary has been tested doesn't mean that it's broached and breached forever. You can reestablish the boundary. It may take a little bit of time. Like we're reestablishing the boundary and it may, it may be uncomfortable and it may reveal further truths about the situation as to whether you should continue interacting with whoever it is that's trying to breach your, your boundary. But the, the, 
the truth of the matter is that you um, you don't need to feel bad that the that the boundary was broached, right? Like I have to relieve myself. Like I'm like, oh, how did I, you know, what did I do to contribute to the situation? How did I? And it's like, no, this is it. Like enough of that, enough of that, right? What it is, it is what it is, and. I can, I'll go back and reflect on how I can do better once I've resolved what's going on, right? Like, so I'm reestablishing my boundary because I think that's, that's the proper way to go forward. And if this, if this person doesn't like the, the reestablishment of the boundary, then I know that this is not the person with whom I need to be entering into a long-term contractual relationship with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I can go back and be like, oh, you know, maybe I should, I, you know, I got an advocate for a reason. Let's let the advocate do their job. And the next time this occurs, I'm going to remember that and I'm going to hold on to that. Um, but I've been, I've been through, I think, I think the biggest thing is, is to hold on and, and just because it's done doesn't mean it's done forever. And just because you, you want to let someone try to, 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 you know, like, okay, yeah, let's give it a try. You know, you can change your mind. You can be like, you know what? I don't really like this. And and that's okay. Or you can be like, you know what? It's okay for you, but it's not okay for anyone else. Like, it's totally fine. It's right. totally fine. Right. And on the parenting front, you got to communicate. Like my husband and I have very, like, I got to address that one. Like that happens all the time. That's from, from a business or from a, or from a parenting standpoint. Like, I think that like, if you have a partner and your partner says yes, when you've said no, then you can be like, okay, timeout client. We just need to powwow for a second and get on the same page. Right. Like, and, and just, I think I, I, I find again and again, like the more honest I can be, um, the better it is. Like, I don't need to pretend. And you get, you get kind of like with this guy, I keep uh, this, this, this lease agreement thing. Like you get lulled into this, like, um, I think, I think you, you like get lulled into this place of like, you know, not knowing what to say because you may not know, like you may, you just may not know, right? Like I may, I don't know the law very well in this, in this instance. So like, I don't know what to say. And so I'm afraid to say stuff. And then, and then I remember like, it doesn't matter. I had, I had this tea, my tea thing today is your strength is your knowledge. And I was like, yes, yes, my strength. And you know what my strength tells me is I don't know. And it's okay to be like, you know what? I don't know why that's important. Can you please tell me what it is you're trying to say, you know, and get curious. Like Mm -hmm. that's, I think, I think when people are trying to push your boundaries or to, you know, like, like for me, I'm trying to remember, get curious about it. Like ask questions. Um, and that- people, people really do respect honesty, even yeah. if the honesty comes in the form of, I don't know, or I don't understand, or I don't trust yeah. that you, da, 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 um, they really respect it. And yeah. honestly, one of the points that I made in the leasing office, which I don't know, I don't think it was like the, the deciding factor, but they said, oh, well, we fixed everything that you are saying. And my response was, and I don't trust that you will do that in the future because of these, all of these reasons, Mm -hmm. because that trust is broken. This lease is broken Yeah, because the contract is a written expression of trust in the other party, that, that, that they will uphold their part and that you will uphold your part. Um, Let's talk about agreements for a second. Please talk about that. Um, and I just have to put my disclaimer in. Um, I'm not. Well, actually, should this be part of the the, the post interview? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can. Do okay, that. so let's do that. So, um, guys, everybody who is a guest expert is also also records a like mini um, training or a post interview Q and A uh, for the students of the School of Bravery. So, if you would like to listen to what Eric is about ready to tell me about all of this agreements and we're going to talk a little bit more um, contracts kind of stuff um, for, for business owners and, and for creative visionary. So if you'd like in on that, you can become a student of the school of bravery. We'd love to have you. Um, you get access as a student at any level, you get access to all of the guest expert trainings that we've done. So um, please join us. And um, 
I'll talk to you guys soon because yeah, we don't know when the next episode is, but just keep posted and subscribe to the show. However you're consuming this right now on YouTube, IGTV, like podcasts, the whole thing, Stitcher, Google play, Spotify, the whole thing. Um, and if you're curious at all about the school of bravery, you can go to school of bravery.com and you can go to Erica, Amy Olson.com to go check out all of Erica's stuff. Um, because she's also a lovely songwriter as well. And so, um, if you're curious to hear how she's utilizing all her boundary enforcing in a creative way, you can go check that out. Um, okay. I'll see you over on the other side.